Hey folks, Nella here. A uh, long time no video. Much longer time than I thought or expected it would be. <laughs> because of a few things, which I'll try to keep short and sweet, but no promises. So grab some, grab something to drink and get, make yourself cozy. <laughs> so in my last video, I told you all how I was taking a hiatus because I need to concentrate on school. And I'm not sure if I mentioned in that video or not that part of the thing with the program that I was in was that I had to do two work practicums, which were like Monday to Friday, eight hour shifts for, you know what, I forget how many weeks straight, <laughs> a lot of weeks straight. And I ended up not being able to complete really my last one because I had a how to describe a prolonged flare-up of my chronic health issues even though I was eating the same so I don't know if it was the eight hour shifts that were getting me or what but I ended up having to um, repeat that but I had to wait until like it was the right time for us for me to be able to repeat it and I tried to make a video like explaining all of this and explaining that I still didn't have extra time for dolls um, back in I want to say early like late January or early February and I ended up being kind of unable to edit those videos even though I tried three times to say it mainly because like when you edit a video, you hear yourself talk over and over again. And I realized that I sounded really down and depressed, even when I was talking about something that like was exciting, that like my voice wasn't showing at all. So I just didn't upload those videos. <laughs> I deleted them. <laughs> and yeah, so I have completed my program now. I actually picked up my graduation package, including the official certificate, um, this morning. And even more exciting than graduating is I'm already working. Um, I'm actually working in my field, in my position. And yeah, I work five hours, sorry, six hours a day, five days a week. And it's really really exciting work and I really enjoy it but it still doesn't leave much time for hobby stuff or at least doesn't leave me much time considering I also have uh, energy I've always been low energy um, as whatever my conditions are have progressed and yeah though so, on the plus side of health stuff for me is I finally um, got to go to the pain clinic which is awesome because that's kind of what I've been dealing with since I was seven <laughs> um, and they're trying me on a little bit of a different medication they're still not certain what is that's causing the all over pain um we have ruled out some things like it doesn't seem to be my thyroid according to my blood work but they're still getting me an ultrasound just to check um and there it's not rheumatoidism which that was really scary for me because uh my granddad had it really 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 bad um and actually the medication for that um, ended up giving him renal failure, but that's another story. <laughs> um, and I had been tested for that. My blood work had been tested, um, I want to say three years ago, but the doctor at the pain clinic went, eh, it could still be something could have shown up now. So we just got that checked. In doll news, I've actually been keeping pretty busy. Um, which is part of the reason I actually wanted to make a video back in late 
January, early February, because I was doing two, not one, but two big kind of in-person outreach with dolls thing. Uh, the first of which was the one day anime convention in February, which um, our local BGD group actually got invited to attend and to have a outreach table, a club table there, which was really, really cool. <laughs> Had a total blast. And I, of course, bought more out for my wall. <laughs> I'm really running out of wall space, I realize. I have a lot of out. And not, like, really regularly shaped walls. Which makes placing out an issue. But, anyway, so it was a total blast. And the other thing was in, I guess it was March, I gave a big presentation about ball-jointed dolls. Um, kind of my introduction to ball jointed dolls with a little spin on it because the group that was getting it wasn't the anime group which is what was last time it was actually the um big provincial doll club because i asked them if they wanted it <laughs> and they did so the little spin they got was um kind of tying in the history of like Okay, well, like, where did Volks get the idea to make Super Dolphy? Well, he got it from the life-size, they were insane, the life-sized um, works of out their porcelain cast, I think, um, ball-jointed dolls, they're massive, um, of uh, Simon and a whole bunch of other people, but Simon's always the one I remember first. Um, and where'd he get, because everyone else in the Japanese out scene who end up making these huge um, ball joint dolls um, that were like displayed in out galleries sort of thing. Um, all got from Simon, and Simon got it from Hans Belmer, and Hans Belmer got it from... Dun -dun -dun -dun! The uh, 19th century and earlier but 19th century in particular, um, German and French ball-jointed dolls. <laughs> so it was kind of like, this is the origins of them, and then this is what they are now. Boom. Um, I am actually now a member of the Provincial Doll Club, which is fun. Um, it's a very different crowd than the BGD group that we have. It's also, they're a lot more like formal and structured, I mean, they actually have an agenda and, like, things that are scheduled <laughs> rather than a whole bunch of us chip in to rent a room at the public library and someone brings snacks. <laughs> oh, and we buy and sell stuff. Um, and then, I guess the other big, big um, doll outreach thing I did was the three-day anime convention in July, which was really cool because we ended up having uh, different members of our club came in on different days. So the display of dolls actually changed from day to day. Like Fridays did not look like Saturdays, Saturdays did not look like Sundays, which was awesome. <laughs> it's cool because then we had people who had already been by our table going like, oh, and what's that one? It's like, oh, well, let us tell you. Um, for instance, I brought K.O. in um, because we had a whole bunch of human dolls, and I went, no, 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 anthro. <laughs> um, yeah, that was, once again, a really, really awesome experience. It has been every time I've done it, um, but it's still it's really, really fun. And just, like, really rewarding and just plain awesome. In preparation for that uh, three-day anime convention, which I was only really able to be there in full capacity on Saturday and Sunday, because the Friday I was still in my work practicum. The, so in preparation for that event, 
I did four face ups. I did four face ups in a day and a half, I want to say. <laughs> it was kind of insane. Um, but you may all remember that I kind of do my face ups in batches because the part of the, the filter that actually filters out the MSC, that filters out aerosols, um, only lasts for three days and that's sealed in an airtight container. Um, so, <laughs> it's kind of like, you, you plan that if there might be bad weather one day, then you're okay, you still got two more days. So, yeah, so I did that. <coughs> so I did four face-ups. And now I'm going to show you all the face-ups because I'm actually really proud of how they came out. So I redid Umako's here. And this is what Umako wore um, to the anime convention. She wore her schoolgirl outfit. Complete with, if I flip them over, her Sailor Moon charms and... And this one right here is from someone who was selling um, also at Icon this year. And then the Sailor Moon Chubs. And the bag actually opens. So I redid Umako's. So, and I'm not sure how much you can tell. She does still have very light freckles. And she's got the eyelashes in now. However, sad news about the eyebrows. Um, you may remember that um, one of the amazing things that I found when I took off Umako's factory face-up from Bolt's 2003 face-up um, was that she had, I guess they were called the guidelines for doing eyebrows. Um, they were little etched, like notches, not notches, little etched lines. Um, they were very, very lightly um, etched into the resin. And that lightly etched, um, yeah, they are very lightly etched. When I took off the face-up I had given her last time, it took off a good portion of the guidelines with them. I was really sad because I actually really liked the placement of those and I liked how I could just sweep pastel over them and still have a little bit of that indentation of hairs. But, it's not to be. Um, next, in the, hmm, wasn't it quite expecting that, was Usagi, who was in my last video. She was, um, she had her face up pretty much removed, except she still had red lipstick. And, after hours upon hours upon hours upon hours of trying to get the last bit of red paint out of the corner of her mouth, I decided that, nope, I didn't have time to try and scrub even more. It was the last weekend before the anime convention, and I wouldn't have time to do face-ups during the week, so she had to get one right away. So I decided to keep the red lipstick, and... Usagi went really dramatic on me. I mean, I was not expecting her to go quite so dramatic, but what what happens, it happens. And there are her little teeth. There are her little teeth. Oh, I love her teeth. Speaking of dramatic, probably one that I was most happy to have completed and looking cool was dun dun Emelinda here. Ah, hair. Um, there's a picture of her in more natural lighting on my Instagram, but I am kind of liking how the uh, torch feature on my phone is really showing you everyone's eyes. <laughs> Except I have the feeling it's not going to show you ghost's eyes very well. Ghost? Yeah. Ghost has very, very dark blue eyes, and they're almost black. 
and I'll just remove ghost wig entirely so you can see how the face up went this time. Still fantasy, but a very different color scheme than last time. So instead of warm browns, we have purple to go with the new wig. New to ghost wig, I should say. Um, less dots, but more colorful. And then brown lips, um, so that ghost doesn't look as feminine. Also, I know, it seemed to go with uh, the rest of the face up, especially with the eyelash. Not the eyelashes, the uh, eyeshadow, which is actually, um, if I pull in closer, the eyeshadow looks like that because I put a whole lot of glitter in it. <laughs> so it's all shiny and metallic. I think it was originally the same color as the lips. So, um, oop, that's the wonder of gloss, folks. Eyeshadow and lips were the same color. Applied gloss no longer the same color. <laughs> okay, um, that's almost, uh, you know what, that's almost everything, and I think this is longer than my first take of the video, but whatever, it is getting late. Usagi now has an even more in-scale Gundam, courtesy of Gundam World Cup, <laughs> which I can't believe that was actually in our city, so like, kudos to the Gunpla Club, uh, do you, gun do you Gunpla, for actually, like, somehow pulling in Bandai to make our city, our anime convention, one of the lines for choosing the semi-finalists of the Canadians who are going to Japan for the Bandai World Cup of Gundam. Yeah. Super exciting. Super awesome. Oh, there's one other thing. I finally have some files, proper files, so I can finish up Noah's dang eyes. Poor boys had really roughly cut out eyes for mm, less than a year, but it's getting close to a year now. So, these are going to help immensely. I just have to be careful I don't hurt myself with how sharp they are. Okay. For realsies, that's everything. Diva, wave bye to the nice people. Yeah, I can't enough. Okay. Bye, everyone.